for acute lymphoid leukemia but today we want to look into chronic leukemia okay chronic leukemia and uh, so um before we start let me i mean take you back small if you if you watch my first video you you, you get to know that i spoke about hematopoiesis okay hematopoiesis uh, the process of formation of blood cells which basically <coughs> occur in the bone marrow okay so in the bone marrow we have the hematopoietic stem cell okay the hematopoietic stem cell of course the hematopoietic stem cell okay divides into the common myeloid progenitor cell and the common lymphoid progenitor cells now the common myeloid progenitor cells now give rise to the 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 blood cells which will get the neutrophils the eosinophils monocytes all the white blood cells and also give rise to the red blood cell okay now when you go to the common lymphoid progenitor cell we are going to get the t lymphocyte and then b lymphocyte which and the plasma cells okay now we have this basis okay if you don't have this basis you can go back to my first video and watch okay but then um talking about the reason why i'm bringing this thing in is that in chronic leukemia okay you have to also understand the hematopoiesis process so that when i speak about something you will be able to get it okay very important so chronic leukemia chronic leukemia now chronic leukemia they are characterized by their slower progression as compared to the uh, acute leukemias okay if you remember we said for the acute leukemia they 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 are they, are, they are care sudden okay they have sudden occurrence very fast but for the chronic leukemia okay they they, they are very slow in terms of their progression okay so take note of that we have established this fact already in our first video so always remember that chronic leukemia has slower progression as compared to acute leukemia now leukemia seen in adults okay chronic leukemia actually is the leukemia seen in adults and the acute leukemia of course is seen in uh, uh, i mean children especially the acute lymphoid leukemia so always remember also that chronic leukemia is the leukemia seen in adults very very important see in adults so a question may come and you see that the patient of a 40 years 50 years there then it must give you a clue that maybe they are talking about acute leukemia okay sorry chronic chronic leukemia chronic leukemia very very important and then uh they are subdivided into chronic myeloproliferative and chronic lymphoproliferative disorders okay so when i say myeloproliferative disorders they are affecting the myeloid progenitor cells which i've spoken about in my first video and then when i say chronic lymphoproliferative disorders means that they are affecting the uh, 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 um, um, uh, lymphoid progenitor cells very very important so always remember that when we spoke of chronic myeloproliferative disorders or chronic lymphoid leukemia this has been further classified into chronic myeloproliferative and chronic lymphoproliferative disorders okay very important so we talk about some of these things now in chronic leukemia okay the blood cells are very few okay remember we spoke about the blood cells in my first video where i said the blood cells are the immature cells okay so maybe myelocyte metamyelocyte myeloblast all those cells are the blood cells they are predominant blood cells in peripheral blood and then bone marrow smear for acute leukemia patients but when you come to chronic leukemia the blood cells are very few okay the blood cells are very few so take note of that very very important very very important and again so 
I stated initially that the chronic leukemia has been subdivided into chronic myeloproliferative disorders and then the chronic lymphoproliferative disorders okay so I want us to look at the chronic myeloproliferative disorders these are leukemias that affect the myeloid lineage okay so they can affect the red blood cells they can affect the white blood cells they can affect the platelet okay because they are affecting the myeloid lineage okay chronic myeloproliferative disorders very important so the acrona malignant disorder of hematopoietic stem cell we, we know that it is characterized by proliferation of one or more cell lines okay we, now the myeloid electric or mega chiocytic cellular element may be affected so here look at that it's either affect the myeloid or the electrode or the mega so when we say the myeloid we're talking about the wbc's electrode we are talking about the red blasters mega chiocytic talking about the privilege okay all these cellular elements may be affected when it comes to chronic myeloproliferative disorders it's very important now they share common features okay so the common features they share so all the chronic myeloproliferative disorders some of the common features they share we have the splenomegaly okay good so splenomegaly splenomegaly is the enlargement of the spleen okay spleen hepatomegaly hepatomegaly also is the enlargement of the hepatocyte okay or the liver let's put it like that the enlargement of the liver okay and then there will be leukocytosis leukocytosis very very important there will be leukocytosis very very important and thrombocytosis why would they be splenomegaly why would they be hepatomegaly remember that they are corona malignant disorders of hematopoietic stem cells so in this case it means that the malignant cell will definitely push the hematopoietic stem cell from the bone marrow okay so they will predominate in the bone marrow and whenever the malignant cell predominate in the bone marrow they can infiltrate tissues they cause tissue infiltration what what do i mean by tissue infiltration they they, they can move to tissues like the liver the spleen okay and other lymphoid tissues and there they will cause the splenomegaly as we see here hepatomegaly as we see here leukocytosis okay because it is a malignant condition it can lead to excess production of leukocyte okay or sorry will be produced remember that leukocytosis can also be induced can also be caused by inflammatory process can also be caused by reactive process like we spoke about in our first video so what it means here is that whenever you are in the lab okay and you are analyzing cases of chronic leukemia okay what you have to pay more attention to is the cause of the leukocytosis the cause of the thrombocytosis is the leukocytosis due to liquid reaction is it due to other reactive conditions like inflammatory causes so you have to rule all these things out so that you will be able to make accurate and correct diagnosis okay so what i'm trying to say here is that in chronic myeloproliferative disorders okay some common uh, 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 futures they share is splenomegaly hepatomegaly leukocytosis and thrombocytosis okay take it like that now there may be some degree of bone marrow fibrosis okay some degree of bone marrow fibrosis take note of that and many chronic myeloproliferative disorders ultimately transition to acute myeloid leukemia okay so there can be transition of the uh, chronic myeloproliferative disorder to acute myeloid trans uh, acute myeloid leukemia in that case there will be some blast 
prices okay very very important very very important and then when you want to classify uh, chronic malware proliferative disorders okay the classification is based on the lineage of most predominant cell okay the lineage of most predominant cells and you can also talk about the marrow fibrosis and you can also look at some clinical and pathological findings okay so the bottom line here with this slide what i want you to take is that when we take chronic marrow proliferative disorders okay which is a, 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 a subdivision of chronic leukemia okay this chronic marrow proliferative disorders they are characterized by coronal malignant disorders of hematopoietic stem cells okay so they act they can affect their heart cell lineage red cell lineage the the, the, the platelet okay can affect the bone marrow cells and when the leukemic cell predominates okay what happens is that they infiltrate tissues which can lead to splenomegaly hepatomegaly leukocytosis sometimes thrombocytosis okay very important so who did their classification for chronic marrow proliferative disorders okay so let's talk about that one so who class the first classification they made is a uh, chronic malignant leukemia uh philadelphia chromosome bcl abl is abl okay bcl abl okay so the first classification they had is a uh, chronic malignant leukemia which is due to philadelphia chromosome translocation or translocation in chromosome which results in bcl able gene formation okay we talk about this in jilted Okay, so you can have Philadelphia chromosome positive chronic malignant leukemia. Okay, another one that they, they spoke about is the Philadelphia chromosome negative. Okay, so you can also have that one. Then we can have chronic neutrophilic leukemia. Chronic neutrophilic leukemia. Okay, so this one is affecting the neutrophils. Okay, neutrophils. Then they also had chronic is eosinophilic leukemia okay so you know the cell lineage then we have the polycythemia rubria vera polycythemia rubria vera the polycythemia rubria vera is actually a malignant condition okay so we talk about that one so they also had a chronic idiopathic myelofibrosis okay so who did all this classification and then they spoke about the essential thrombocytopenia we talk about that one and the last one they classify is chronic myeloproliferative disease which is unclassified okay so what i want you to know is that when it comes to who classification of chronic myeloproliferative disorders okay these are some classification they did okay very important now let's look at the mechanism of chronic malignant leukemia and uh, the Philadelphia chromosome positive okay because that is, that one is uh, uh, more examinable it it is it normally comes in exam and it is the most i mean i mean inherited one okay it is the most common one that uh, about 90% of patients with chronic malignant leukemia have the Philadelphia chromosome to be positive you know on cytogenetics, they find the Philadelphia chromosome. So, let's look at the mechanism. Okay, how does it occur? Hmm? How does it occur? So, if you look at this diagram carefully, okay, we have two different chromosomes. Okay, two different chromosomes. Now we have chromosome nine, which is which has a long, I mean, length here. Okay. Now, if you look at the chromosome nine, okay, it has what is called abl portion okay you see it's here so abl portion and you see that now if you look at the chromosome 22 okay chromosome 22 that's a short one it also have h okay sorry bcr portion okay now there is translocation okay 
there's translocation from chromosome 9 and then chromosome 22 okay so after the translocation okay there's chromosomal break so there's a part of this break part of this will break then they will fuse okay then when they fused when they fuse it forms the result as a result of the fusion okay of the able and the bcr gene from chromosome 9 and chromosome 22 okay so it's this chromosome 9 okay finally changed to chromosome 22 and that chromosome 22 which is the bcr the fusion that has resulted okay is called the philadelphia chromosome the philadelphia chromosome actually the philadelphia chromosome was uh first identified in philadelphia okay philadelphia is a city okay it's a city so Philadelphia and then this translocation leads to the formation okay formation of the ABL and then BCL so the ABL is coming from chromosome 9 okay BCL is coming from chromosome what 22 when they fuse they form the BCL ABL gene okay can you see that let me show them go back so this is chromosome 9 chromosome 22 so this one will bring the abl this one will bring so there's translocation there's fusion which result in formation of bc r abl gene it's a fusion okay a fusion from uh, the translocation okay so they fuse to form this bc r abl gene which it's changed to chromosome 22 which is called the philadelphia chromosome okay good so chromosome 22 post translocation okay and then the molecular weight of this now the result that is or the result that forms as a result of the translocation is the bcl abl gene okay the bcl abl gene now the bcl ABL gene is a protein which has a molecular weight of 210 the BCL ABL protein is 210 kilo dietin okay 210 kilo dietin so always remember that when we talk of the Philadelphia chromosome okay the mechanism is very simple we have two chromosomes okay chromosome 9 and chromosome 22 now the chromosome 9 goes for uh, uh, the ABL gene and the chromosome 22 have the BCL okay so when there is translocation there is fusion of the two uh, uh, um, genes so we, we, we end up getting BCL ABL fusion which is a protein okay it's a protein and has a molecular weight of 210 kilo that now this protein is very important because you gotta it's a tyrosine kinase okay remember that it's what a tyrosine kinase protein okay this fusion this resultant product from the translocation bcl able gene is a tyrosine kinase which is a protein and what the tyrosine kinase does is that it disrupts the cell leading to increased proliferation and decreased apoptosis so in after the formation of this fusion or this protein okay now i have made you understand that it is a tyrosine kinase protein and what it does is that it increases proliferation of malignant cells so people with this philadelphia chromosome positive will experience more I mean, I mean, uh, pains when it comes to the chronic leukemia, okay? Because this gene, which is a tyrosine kinase, 
what it does is that it increases proliferation of the malignant cells and suppresses apoptosis. Remember, apoptosis is programmed cell death. So, in the body, during the cell cycle, okay, any cell that or any malignant cell that fails to pass through the checkpoint, the body, I mean, finds a way to kill it. So, program self death, okay. But in this case, in this patient, they have the BCL able gene, which is a tyrosine kinase, which overcomes apoptosis. So you see what happened here. Because there is no apoptosis, this gene will be able to pass through the cell cycle and increase proliferation of the malignant cell. Okay, very important. So no wonder they treat patient with uh, chronic malignant leukemia with. Uh, 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 tyrosine kinase inhibitors okay because in that case you are trying to inhibit this protein this tyrosine kinase protein so that proliferation will decrease and apoptosis will hold, increase very very important so I have spoken a lot but the bottom line here is that in chronic myeloid leukemia one common uh, 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 um, one that is common is that Philadelphia positive uh, 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 chromosome. Okay, now the mechanism that I mean it takes to occur is what I've explained that there's translocation between chromosome 9 and chromosome what 22, which results in the fusion okay of the ABL and BCL gene. Okay, this fusion results in the formation of a protein called the BCL. ABL protein, which is a tyrosine kinase with a molecular weight of 210 kilodalton. Okay, and what it does is that it suppresses apoptosis and promotes proliferation of malignant cells. Okay, very important. So, what are some of the clinical features of someone with a chronic myeloid leukemia? Clinical features someone with chronic myeloid leukemia, very important. One common clinical feature is, uh, you see, there is a leukocytosis. So usually diagnosed when there is elevated WBC. Okay. So after you run your full blood count, you see high or increased amount of LBC. Uh, sorry, WBC on the full blood count. Okay. You can, I mean, diagnose the patients by saying he or she has the chronic myeloid leukemia but in that case before you do that you have to rule out all other causes of leukocytosis very very important the leukemia reaction reactive leukocytosis the one that we get from bacterial infection okay tuberculosis you know you have to rule out all these causes so that you be sure that this leukocytosis is a result as a result of chronic myeloid leukemia Folks, it's not easy being in the lab, okay? In the lab, it's not about running the full blood count. See, some people will pick some stuff that they, 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 they want to know on the full blood count results. Somebody will run the full blood count, just check the hemoglobin level. <laughs> Somebody will also check the, the hematocrit level. But, folks, it goes beyond that, okay? The patient's life may depend on you at that point. Remember, it is leukemia we are talking about, okay? So, always remember that in the lab, you can diagnose leukemia when there's elevated level of WBCs, okay? Spinomegaly. Spinomegaly, okay? Maybe the patient may present with spinomegaly. I've explained why there is spinomegaly, okay? Now you see features of anemia, okay? Features of anemia. I hope you remember the features of anemia. Fatigue, those stuff, okay? Very important. Then diagnosis to when there are symptoms of hypermetabolism, okay? Hyper hypermetabolism increase metabolism, okay? Very, very important. So now symptoms of hypermetabolism include lassitude, weight loss, anorexia, and the person will sweat in the night, okay? Because there is ongoing metabolism in the body because there is 
a lot of malignant cells okay very important so abnormal platelet function mm? you know the platelet function so in this case there will be an abnormal platelet function one is called epistasis we have easy bruising menorrhagia and hemorrhage okay hemorrhage all these are the functions of the platelet okay but then if there is chronic myeloid leukemia you will see abnormal platelet function in such situations okay now there is gout or renal impairment as a result of hyperuricemia from excessive periodic breakdown you see there's hypermetabolism okay so as a result of the hypermetabolism okay there's going to be gout you know you remember gout hmm? gout or hyperuricemia so when there is an increased metabolism okay there is breakdown of uh, the purines so we get atp and this atp when it accumulates okay can lead to formation of gout very important so always just put it like it because of the hyper metabolism there is going to be what is called gout or hyperuricemia okay from so always remember that so let's go to the lab so what in chronic myeloid leukemia what do we do in the lab very important because laboratory pretty major role when it comes to diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia very very important so laboratory findings so the leukocytosis is usually greater than 50 times 10 to the power 9 liters and sometimes greater than 500 times 10 to the power 9 liters okay so very important there is increased amount of leukocyte count okay very very high very very high okay so in this case when you suspect increased amount of leukocytes uh, which may be uh, 50 microliter or 500 microliter or greater than you can suspect chronic malaria leukemia very important now a whole spectrum of malaria cells is seen in peripheral blood okay so a whole spectrum of malaria cells is seen in peripheral blood after you prepare your ten smear you will see malaria cells in the peripheral blood very very important very very important so you will see neutrophils and myelocytes not only neutrophils and myelocytes you also see pro myelocytes okay and some blood cells very important very important so bas basophilia more prominent as the disease progresses. so basophilia is you can also see basophilia increased level of basophils okay so the basophils may not shown okay because maybe um in most cases at the start of the disease the basophilia may not show but it may be more prominent as the disease progress okay very important and there is very few blast cells okay very very few blast cells less than 10 percent so you are not going to see a lot of image uh, mature uh, immature cells okay very few of them mm? unlike the acute leukemia where the blast cells are pro uh, prominent uh there will be nomocytic nomochromic anemia okay nomocytic nomochromic anemia with nucleated rbc's so you know nucleated rbc's they look like rbc's but the nuclear stain picks the stain okay but they have a central pillar so we have to be able to differentiate between the nucleated rbc's and then the nomocytic nomochromic anemia very important did i say that nomocytic nomochromic anemia no you have to be able to differentiate between the nucleated rbc's and the red blood cells in thin smear okay Thrombocytosis is usual, okay? It's usual. Thrombocytopenia or normal thrombocyte count may also be seen, okay? Because of the malignancy, you may also see 
thrombocytopenia. But the thrombocytosis is easier. Serum uric acid is raised because of the hyperuricemia. Okay, yeah. You see uric acid in serum. Take note of that. Then there is a bone marrow is hypercellular with granulocyte predominance. Okay, so a lot of granulocyte in the bone marrow. Okay, very important. Then when you do cytogenesis, you will see the gene, the Philadelphia chromosome, which is the BCRABL gene. Okay, you see the translocation location on the cytogenetic analysis very important so in the lab this is what we do this is what we check so you have to be able to understand the concept okay maybe your lab you don't do the cytogenetic okay but you can perform full blood count when you suspect there is high level of WBC okay you have to prepare your thin smear most lab the laboratory scientists don't do they just prepare the tick smear but a tick smear will not show a lot of the cells okay so you prepare the thin smear you know then you look out for some granulocytic cells okay promarocytes and sometimes you may see the some blood cells which are less than 10 percent okay you can also estimate the level of seric serum uric acid okay very very important very very important so this is what i'm talking about okay so you see this so all these are immature cells can you see this immature cells the malocyte malocyte okay very very important so the blood cells are few and you see there are platelets here, thrombocytes, there are platelets at the small, smaller ones here. Lots of them. But the cell is hypercellular. You see the RBCs, a lot of them. Okay. The, a lot of RBC. But then here, what we are looking for, okay, is the blood cells, the immature cells. Okay. So this cells I'm talking about, okay. So in peripheral blood, you see neutrophils. I'll show you neutrophils there, myelocyte there, promyelocyte. So when you come back here, see the neutrophils. This is a neutrophil, okay? You have three to four loops, something like this. A neutrophil, okay? These are the myelocytes, okay? The promyelocyte cells, sometimes platelets. So you have to be able to, I mean, analyze the cells and say so, okay so maybe I'm supposed to do thin smear for malaria parasite okay and then uh, during the smear preparation okay I, I I found this cells I found this cells you have to draw attention to the clinician that no I suspect that there may be chronic malaria leukemia so Let's do something about that. Okay? Always remember that neutrophils are there, malocytes are there, okay? Promalocytes are also there. Very important. This is what is called a nucleated RBC. You see that? So, you see this one, they have the central pillar, but they they don't take the stain. But this one, there's a central pillar, but it has taken the stain, okay? Very, very important. So, differentiation of chronic malaria leukemia from leukemoid reaction so in my first video i spoke about leukemoid reaction where i said the leukemoid reaction okay uh, it's not um actually uh leukemia okay but in leukemoid reaction there is also excess production of wbc so there's leukocytosis okay so how will you differentiate the chronic malaria leukemia from other reactive causes like the leukemoid reaction? That's what we're talking about. So on evaluation of a leukocytosis with lymphocyte predominance, you see a monomorphic population is concerning for chronic lymphoid leukemia, whereas a promorphic that is 
varying sizes and shape lymphocytosis is suggestive of a reactive process okay so what they are trying to say is that when you are evaluating the leukocytosis you will see a monomorphic okay, uh, population of the cells like monomorphic means they have the same shape and size okay but then you see premorphic they have varying sizes and when you see cells with varying sizes okay then it tells you that that condition may be as a result of reactive cause process which may be leukemoid reaction very important another one that you can talk about is this now there is something we call the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase lab leukocyte alkaline phosphatase lab is high in leukemoid reaction okay take note of that but it is very low in chronic myeloid leukemia in fact sometimes you will not even see lab in chronic myeloid leukemia okay so very important treatment treatment for chronic myeloid leukemia well mainly with tyrosine kinase inhibitors and i hope you know the reason why okay because of the the the, the protein bcl abugin which is uh, tyrosine kinase which increase proliferation and suppresses apoptosis if you want to prevent the activity of the malignant cells if you want to prevent excess proliferation if you want to increase apoptosis for a person to be okay you have to give the person something that will inhibit the bcl able gene which is the tyrosine kinase and that is a drug a group of drugs we call them tyrosine kinase inhibitors example is the imatinib okay imatinib is a prototype okay very important then we have secondary generation tyrosine kinase inhibit so the imatinib is very good but you have some secondary generations you have the dastinib and nilotinib take note of these drugs okay they all suppresses apoptosis did i say they all sub no they all increases apoptosis and suppresses uh, proliferation of the malignancies okay very important so chemotherapy with hydrozyurea okay hydrozyurea very important then stem cell transplantation can also do that then the goal of chronic malar leukemia treatment is to achieve hematological remission that is normal full bracken results okay no organomegaly no philadelphia chromosome negative okay no philadelphia chromosome positive or no philadelphia chromosome okay very important now that's the goal so the chronic phase can be treated or controlled by myelosuppressive drugs example is the hydrosis urea the bosophan interferon alpha okay then you can do the cafferesis cafferesis you know remember epheresis okay you take a whole blood then you take the uh, the leukocyte you know uh, separate the leukocyte from the others so you do that and i think that one will be so cool okay also always remember remember that in treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia okay which you see i can say the hallmark of chronic myeloid leukemia here is is as a result of the philadelphia chromosome positive because it plays major role in about 90 percent cases so if you can get a drug that will inhibit the activity of that tyrosine kinase that chromosome that philadelphia chromosome voila you go you understand that so take note of that so let's look at this case study okay on chronic myeloid leukemia let's look at this case study a, 50, a 55 year old female visited Kofi Chrome SDA hospital complaining of unintentional weight loss and performing abdominal exam shows splenomegaly laboratory analysis show the following so platelet 600,000 microliter wow the hemoglobin is 8 gram per deciliter hematoclate is 25 percent so there is thrombocytosis right wbc count 120,000. so you see leukocytosis there 
neutral fuels 81 percent so we have the band neutral fuels too is eight percent malocytes we have three percent okay you see metamalocytes two percent eosinophils one percent basophils one percent bone marrow biopsy shows hypercellular with increased myeloid electric ratio very very nice case study okay actually i this case study will help you you know in most of your exam okay so the first question is what is the most likely diagnosis what is the most likely diagnosis so a 55 year old female visited covid chromes day hospital complaining of unintentional weight loss on performing abnorm abdominal exam shows splenomegaly so there's splenomegaly okay splenomegaly so the platelets okay so you can base your diagnosis by looking at the platelet the splenomegaly but what will help you to diagnose this thing is the presence of the myelocyte and the metamyelocyte together with the increased wbc count once again look at the age of the patient a 55 year old female an adult okay so i will go for chronic myeloid leukemia chronic myeloid leukemia okay so what do you expect on cytogenetics so on cytogenetics actually cytogenetics is a uh, another lab test that they use for the chronic myeloid leukemia patient okay so in that case they are looking for translocations on chromosome okay so if it is chronic myeloid leukemia what do you think remember philadelphia chromosome okay so in this case they will they will they will, they will find or they will see the translocation that's the philadelphia chromosome which is characterized by t to bracket 9 h to 22 okay that is the philadelphia chromosome so good so the common I have the answers here so the first one is a uh, chronic myeloid leukemia you have the philadelphia chromosome for the second one okay okay and the next question is uh explain why there is hepatomegaly okay so hepatomegaly can be due to tissue infiltration like the liver okay by the malignant cells okay then what will be what will be the drug of choice for the patient and why so if you're treating such patient what will be your drug of choice and the last question says how will you rule out reactive leukocytosis so your drug of choice what do you think so, oh i'll go in for tyrosine kinase inhibitors one common example is imatinib okay why because they promote apoptosis and decrease proliferation by the malignant cells okay very important i don't think i added the last answer how you rule out reactive leukocytosis so you can perform uh, a test to check for the presence of lab remember lab i spoke about lab mm -hmm. so if lab is there then definitely it will be for chronic uh, sorry to be for uh, 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 um, um, lab for reactive leukocytosis okay but absence may suggest chronic myeloid leukemia but if that one is not reliable we can also go for the, the sizes okay the sizes in chronic myeloid leukemia the cells shows monomorphic they don't they are not variable in sizes and shape okay but for the leukemia reaction, the cells, okay, are promorphic. They vary in size and shape. So this is a very nice case study, which can help you in your study. Okay, very important. And, uh, with your.